So we did a Q&A the other day, but there was one other question that we didn't have a chance we actually missed. So I'll read the question and then we'll all give our input. The question was, what markers or measures do you look for in an athlete when it comes to measuring progress? Um, and then the second part of that question that the guy asked, which goes hand in hand, is he was specifically uh, talking about like how to push up for a weight class. Um, which is something that I personally like that's that's what I've done so far in my own bodybuilding so I, I have a lot of like hands-on experience with it um, but so to, so to start like I think a lot of it comes down to quality of weight and, and what the weight looks like and then what actually what actually the number is you know so if your goal is you competed as a, as a light heavyweight bodybuilder you want to push up to the heavyweight class I would say that you probably need to have an influx over a long off season of about 50 pounds um, to kind of really make sure you solidify the jump in that class. Now, yes, there's outliers on, on both ends. There's guys that can gain too much fat, and then you have the guys like Brett Wilkin, Mike Toscano, who can stay extremely lean and still move that jump up, you know. But, but I would say, generally speaking, most guys like myself, like Kyle, like in order to really solidify a jump in a weight class, you're going you're gonna to have to push your weight up to get there. Um, so, so how do you go about doing that? You know, and, and this is something I talked about a little bit about in, within Brett's progress. Um, I, I believe firmly in, in pushing up and then kind of settling and stabilizing. So I don't think that you need to go from weighing in at, at 190 pounds and then you know that you're kind of tall for the light heavyweight class and you want to push up to the heavyweights and then jumping right up to 260 as fast as you can. There's going to be a lot of fat gain there. There's going to be a lot of blood markers out of place. Um, but I would make like 15 pound increments for yourself. Okay, hold a 15 pound jump and then allow that weight to really stabilize and solidify over three to four months. Um, definitely get your blood work checked, see where things are at. And then, and then make your next jump, okay? Um, I'll, I'm going to go into something really kind of in depth really quick. Kyle asked me earlier how I felt about blasting and cruising. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? So, yes, there's definitely risk involved here. Um, with a lot of my top guys, um, and I might get crucified for saying this, but I base their, their blast and cruise schedule based off of what their blood work is, okay? So what I mean by that is they don't have to take 12 weeks off. They don't have to cruise for 12 weeks. If I get their blood work done on the end of a cycle and the, the level of skewedness within that blood work panel is not bad, we're gonna fix things, we're gonna correct things, and then we're gonna get back at it. Um, because a, a lot of people's bodybuilding window is a lot shorter than what you might think on paper. Like, I know most likely by the age of 35, I'll be done with the competitive aspect of this. So I don't have 10 years to slowly push my weight up. Like, I gotta get it done, you know? Um, so be responsible. Don't sweep things under the rug. Get your blood work checked. If things are okay, if you're taking the health supplements that you need to take all year long, and that's something else too. I want to do a video on this specifically, but I, the most regimented part of my bodybuilding is my health supplementation. And I'm not saying that because I own a supplement company. Um, I've always been that way. So if I'm on Christmas day, I still wake up every morning. I might miss a shot. I might miss a training session. I don't miss taking my vitamins. I never miss uh, whether I'm on vacation, no matter what, I never miss it. So make sure that you have that part. If you're really serious about this, make sure that your health supplementation is in point, on point all year long. Uh, when it comes to cycling your doses and stuff like that, get your blood work checked while you're on, get your blood work checked again while you're off, see what discrepancies you have there, correct those things and then go on. If everything looks good, uh, like I talked about earlier this week, Nick's blood work looks great. You know, so that doesn't tell me that we need to be off for a long period of time. Um, again, with his goals in mind, and he has big goals, like we don't have time to take, you know, beyond, like this beyond half the year, be off half the year. I, unless something's seriously wrong, I don't think that's the case, all right? So um, again, getting back to the point, make these jumps, make these goal, solidify that goal, hold that weight for a few months, and then go back up. Hold that goal for a few more months and then go up. Um, my last off season before I competed at USA's, I was dead set on basically holding 250 to 255 for five months straight. Why? Because I wanted to, to get the quality of that weight better and better and better over time. That's what I felt like was going to happen because it, when you first hit it, it's going to be more glycogen, it's going to be more water. The longer you can hold that, the, the quality of that tissue, the dens density of that tissue should improve. Um, and then make your next move from there, you know, so the longer you can hold these weight jumps the better But you have to make them, you know, like 
I'm I'm helping a guy right now that's been a middleweight bodybuilder for I think three years, um, and he told me he he's like I want to do nationals next year. I said, well, okay, and you you have to hit 225 by June. You have to hit 225 by June, and I want you to at least hold it through, through mid-August, and then we'll start dieting for the show. So that's how I approach those things. Like if he, if he doesn't hit 225, he doesn't do nationals. Like that's it, you know. Uh, because I don't, again, when, when you go to a national show, if you if you can't pretty much guarantee a top five in my mind, I wouldn't waste the time. You know, keep getting better. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Obviously, I didn't get an X and the X's and O's of how to do this in terms of bumping food up. But obviously, you're gonna have to bump up the food. For most of us, you're gonna have to throw more cheat meals in. Um, you know, even like myself, like I could care less. I don't pride myself on staying extremely lean because. I've found a system that works for me, and I've found a system that, that I think I continue to get stronger in. Uh, the strongness equates to quality muscle, and then when I die it down, it's the, the muscle's there, you know? So that's how it works for me. Um, but it really comes down to, to making these jumps, solidifying the jumps, having goal weights in mind, making sure you attain those goal weights. And, and like I said, like cycles are definitely a part of it. Um, and, and I'll go into some more detail about how, how to go about those things. but. Um, make sure you're responsible. Like I know a lot of guys that are scared to get blood work. Um, I, I think in a way it's okay if you're scared to get blood work because it means you care. But at the same time, you need to get over that fear and get your blood work done. Be, be real with yourself. Know what those numbers are, and then go from there. You know, because a lot of times, um, even when I got blood work done just a few weeks ago, was I a little nervous as what the numbers were? Sure, I was. You know, I mean because I, it's. For now, for me especially, it's more riding on it than just myself. Like I have two sons that are depending on me to be around. Um, and I also I also want to accomplish my goals. And I know that if my blood work is skewed, that's going to delay me accomplishing my goals because I'm going to be responsible and, and do the precautionary things that I need to do. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helps. If you guys have anything, I can ramble for days. So um, Basically, I mean, just in short, I well. think being consistent is what it's going to come down to at the end of the day. Um, a lot of people sometimes, they look to me, to Matt, to other people to, you know, update, they'll have an update weekly and say they gain some weight. Or even if their weight just stalls after gaining 10 pounds, like, you don't always need to change the diet. Like, you can probably speak more with exactly what you're doing with Nick, but to yeah. my knowledge, like, his diet's not changing every two weeks, right? Right. You pick, a, you know, you pick a diet, you make some changes, you should know pretty much based on his body, like depending on how much you add, what you would expect to happen, right? And through working together, you get a really good idea on how he's going to move from there. But as far as making changes every week, especially in off season, like that's where you have to be a little bit patient. I'm not saying you take years to do it, but if you have to make changes every week, I think then there's something a little wrong or usually the client, in this case, Nick, wouldn't be being consistent. So by him nullifying that and the first variable being consistent, it makes everything a lot easier. And then from there, like I said, the training, is to me is kind of most important. That's where you create the stimulus and you create the environment, right? Then you can absorb and simulate the nutrients and then all the other things, supplementation comes into play. So once you're consistent, if you're paying attention to your health and you're doing all the right things and you have somebody that you could really, that cares about you, right? And having a good coach, I think it's gonna help um, that person really get to the next level. And I, I made a post today, but um for those of you guys that are part of this site, like I can promise you beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you can replicate the intensity that we all brought today in this workout, mm. and then you're backing it with food, yeah. um, you're food. gonna make progress. I mean, it's a foolproof method, like it's foolproof. Uh, and that's ultimately what I want this site to be about. I want it to be a resource where anybody can go to and be like, okay, how do I, how can I bring my training up to par? Um, and you know, if we can be a living, breathing example of that, that's that's the icing on the cake for me. So um, hopefully that gives you some answers. Uh, you you have to set like br pull a calendar out if you have to. You know, pull a calendar out. You know, by this month I have to weigh this much. By from this month to this month I need to hold this weight. I can't. You know, if I go to the Arnold, for example, the Arnold's a huge bodybuilding weekend. Um, I already know within my own progress. Same thing for Nick. Like we cannot lose weight at the Arnold. So if that means having a cheat meal every day to hold our weight, that's what we have to do. But like you have to know those types of things. So having a calendar, knowing what your weight goals are, knowing if you're gonna go to the Arnold, during that period you're gonna have to push your food more because your, your uh, energy expenditure is gonna be higher. All those things. So you have to account for all that stuff, you know, because you could easily go to the Arnold, lose 12 pounds, and you just lost three months of progress, 
granted, a lot of it, again, is water, glycogen, etc. But, but again, holding that water and glycogen is a part of the process of moving up a weight class. Um, so, hope this helps, guys. Appreciate you guys following along. Thank you for all the support, and we'll be back.